Assalamu alaikum, Coach Nadir. Assalamu alaikum, peace. I'm Coach Fatima. From OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com. Personal and we really just want to um, answer a few different questions that we get all the time since we talk about marriage, we talk about polygyny, um, we deal with fulfilling relationships and parenting, a lot of different things. And we get a number of different questions, so shoot. Okay, one of the questions I get is, how do we feel about being married young? Um, and one specific question was, do we feel like we raised each other within it? An older sister actually asked me this, so um, you go mm. first. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me. I think the best time to get married is when you're young. Um, it teaches you one thing. It teaches you right off the bat is responsibility. Um, I was 19 uh, when we first got married, and I just, you know, making the transition from being the stereotypical nightmare, if you will, to discovering Islam, learning who I was, and, and really crafting a strong identity. I wanted to, and to want to do what's right, um, despite my parents' objections. They wanted me to experiment more and have more stuff yeah. you know in essence women and so on and then kind of decide so you know you got to sample everything <laughs> then make a decision you know that's the kind of culture we came from it's the kind of culture they came from i mean they had me i was born um uh, to my parents when they were 16 okay so it's kind of the culture they came from they weren't raised muslims at all like that but you know i'm different than that so i wanted to do what was right and was learning about islam and our religion and way of life and knew that this was uh, one of the best things to do and i had already known um, Fatima, at that time, I already known her for five years, and I already told her when I was fourteen, um, I was going <laughs> to marry her, and spoke it into existence. I didn't know the the path and the road and whatever to get there, but uh, five years later, um, I got married, and that was uh, one of the best decisions, obviously, um, in my life. But I think it's important that when you're growing, that you learn these different things, and you look, you're headed to a maturity. See, we look at things now we're not looked at as a man until. You know, in your 20s, your 30s, just a, a number of different things. And that was not what it was 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago. I mean, you were men at puberty. You were men when you go ahead and, and procreate, you know, if you will. So I was all, my father told me, um, we didn't have the best relationship, but my father told me I was a man. I think I was 13 years old. It was the last time I got a whooping. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, you know, you're, you can be fruitful and all these other different things. It depends on what your goals are and stuff in life as well. I mean, if it's to uh, graduate college and do certain things, you know, it depends on the individual. Not necessarily for everyone is the best thing, but for us in our circumstance situation, say we've been married 24 years now um, and not look the part, at least I don't think so. I mean, we look pretty good. I, and, you know, it's <laughs> grays out here and everything. But um, yeah, it's definitely, um, to me, it's encouraging and I want my children um, to also marry young. I mean, I have children older than 19. My third child, our third child is 19, 19. years old, and they're not married yet. Um, but, you know, prayerfully, we'll be able to find some men um, that are strong men, that are righteous men, that qualify um, to marry our daughters off and to have successful, fulfilling, happy marriages. Yeah. So, your um, turn. For me, I think it's so important to marry young. My parents were... Uh, my dad was 19. My mother was 20 when she gave birth to me. They weren't married. So I come from a place of my parents were never married. And they ultimately broke up when I was three. And um, that just, that really, when I got older and I became a teenager, that really set the bar for what I didn't want. So at a young age, I'd say maybe 15, 16. I said, I don't want that. I want to be married young. I want to um, do the right thing and start off on the right foot. Because, and then on the flip side of that, since my grandparents raised me, I saw the value in marriage. And because my, my parents didn't raise me, I saw why it was important to do so. So my bar was pretty high. But I also will say I, I really had a high goal of who I wanted to marry. So... This guy, <laughs> Coach Nadir, um, he was so smart. You know, when I first met him, he's still smart. So I've always admired his intelligence, good looking. You know, that didn't hurt. Uh, <laughs> strong. So I knew that when I became Muslim, I'm like, okay, now we could put the smart and the good looking and the strong in this package of Islam. And I said, this is my dream mate this is my dream husband 
So, I mean, you know, there's days where we don't feel like a dream to each other. I'm not going to lie. I know I work his nerves sometimes and I talk too much, but it's rare. He's, just, he's just so smart. So I was like, you know what? He's not a dummy. He's good looking. He's strong. And that makes her a good foundation to lead a family. So I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I didn't know who was going to um, support us in our marriage. But I really had really high standards, high goals for marriage because I didn't come from that. My parents didn't get along and broke up when I was three and they just both just kind of threw the towel in and my dad was in and out and my mother was just not around. She had a very um, controlling husband that didn't want her to make the connection with me. That's for another video, but you just giving you a little background as to why it was so important for me personally to be a wife and not somebody's option. So um, uh, it's important. And we do want our daughters and our sons to become married one day, and we always pray for that. Um, but I, you know, there's another question that we did get to. Uh, do we feel like, um, an older uh, sister asked this, do we feel like we raised each other up in our marriage? I don't know. I don't. I mean, really, to to think of it like that, raise each other like that. I helped raise her. Or she raised me yeah. and stuff like that. I believe that we grew together. Yeah. You know, as she mentioned. Um, what did I do? She, no, no, you said something <laughs> about. Um, you know, your mother and father. They broke yes. when you were three or something like that. Well, for me, uh, my parents got married when I was five, so they were twenty one at the time, and I was at the wedding, the ring boy. <laughs> Um, but they they got divorced when I was 12. So they were married seven years. Now, we more than already tripled that time. And sometimes people look at us and it's like, okay, we might go to the doctor, fill in our children's information and stuff in. And they always ask for a last name of each child. And all of the last names are our last name. They're like, oh, you, <laughs> yeah, this, they're all by the same man? or that's yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? You know, thankfully, you know, we're blessed not have to, to deal with um, mama, baby mama drama or baby daddy issues and stuff like right. that. So, um, well, my parents, they have five children. Um, and my mother had, has, um, a daughter by someone else. So basically my half sister. So it's six of us, if you will, I grew up all in the same household and everything like that. So my dynamic was totally different than her dynamic. She was the yeah. only child from both of her parents. Yeah. So I just saw a big family. I mean, I was the oldest of six in the big family. I didn't want a big family. I was like, a son and a daughter, I'm good. You know, four daughters, six. I said that too. Four, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So, thing. you know, law is the best of planet. So, four daughters mm -hmm. first, and, you know, followed by six sons. And then polygyny, I got married. I didn't, I know Islam said something about you got more than one wife. I didn't know any details about it. I really didn't um, have any plans on it or anything like that early on. I'm 19 years old. I'm just now learning. <laughs> I didn't even learn of our religion. But, you know, then 15 years later, as we've grown together, I don't think we've um, raised each other, but I believe that we've grown um, together, grown with each other. We've seen each other go from not having a beard Ooh. to now the grays um, in the beard. And now my son good. having a mustache, <laughs> looking like how I oh. looked freshman year in high school. So, you know, we've absolutely grown together, been through a number of different tragedies together, a lot of different successes yeah. and a lot of different things. But I wouldn't say we raise each other because... We come from different backgrounds and that'd be doing a discredit to our parents and other experiences as well. Even right. though our parents didn't provide the, the best example of what to do, at least for me, my parents provided a great example of what not to do. Same. You know, and that could be a, a bigger motivator and a driver anyway when it comes to um, relationships and how you set your life. I mean, people are motivated either by one or two reasons. You know, you're the anticipation of gain or pleasure and the avoidance of pain, you know, and 80% of the population said to be motivated more by pain than my pleasure. So with that being said, you know, I saw my parents did and there's things I didn't want to have in my family. I didn't want to have the, the alcoholism. I didn't want to have yes. um, the other challenges and the, the traditional normal dysfunction yes. that happens in families. I mean, it's more sad, but there's more dysfunction than regular what we call function, you know, not really a nurturing environment. So there are a lot of different things that I saw that I did not want. And once I came upon Islam and found, and once I came upon Islam, there was, that began a whole journey to actually find out what 
Islam is actually the truth because I was not interested in it at all. Period. Yeah. Um, I was. <laughs> we're both born and raised Christian. We were well. We were born on our fifth as Muslims, but we were raised as Christians. Went to Christian schools. We met in a Christian high school. Yeah. Okay, so the best thing I got of that was my wife in keyboarding class, so I could type. <laughs> <laughs> but I failed you know, keyboarding, so you, you know, know, but she's good. <laughs> but now. I got him. <laughs> so you know, so there's a lot of different things, and I was you know part of that organized religion thing. So as part of my search and everything else, I you know heard about Islam, wasn't really interested, and I searched a whole bunch of other stuff. I believe it was God. I disowned organized religion, and the person who was teaching, talking, trying to talk to me about Islam, a lot of it was me having to buy the messenger. What he was doing was all the way wrong. Um, just in general, though he was a Muslim and he came about it the way he came about it and everything else. And the timing and stuff wasn't right. I said, you know, I, I respect this. I respect the women who cover and all of that stuff. And I respect, you know, Malcolm X and so on. But I wasn't giving my weed, women and baby back ribs. <laughs> so I was not interested. And thankfully, um, you know, continuing on my search and, and being genuine in the search, I went deeper into it. And a few years later, I um, got some information to really study the roots of the three main monotheistic religions being Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And Islam came out right on top, no question. I mean, with my yeah. extensive knowledge in the Bible and just confirmed everything. Um, as it says, it is its confirmation that will come before it, but it erases all of the falsehood that goes along with it and has been adulterated by some. Anyway, that's not <laughs> the topic of the video, but marriage is obviously important yeah. and plays an important role and shaping who we are as part of our identity and having to be mature. I know me being married at 19 is is not a big deal to me. But some other people are like, whoa, you're married at 19? Yeah, I was married at 19, man. That's, that's a protection for me is just to do what's right and to try to be righteous and, and to yeah. be on that path. So, and I wanted to be that father that was nurturing, that was around, that told you should you love them and everything else, not to have some, see somebody drunk or, you know, cheating and all kinds of other there. things. So, right, or not see them at all, yeah. right. So, you know, it really set some of the foundation up um, with that. Well, I agree with everything you said. Because, <laughs> well, I agree with it because that's been my experience as well. Um, you know, having a single mother for a split second and hearing her story. And I, somebody once said to me, nobody can tell your mother's story better than your mother. They can tell their account of her story, but only she knows the truth of her story. So I got little bits and pieces from her. I got little bits and pieces from my grandparents. But again, um, I knew what not to do. And to this day, uh, she texted me, I think a couple weeks ago, and she said, I'm so proud of the family that you two created. And that meant a lot because she's grown. She's not 20 anymore. She's 64. And um, oh. yeah, well, that's what I said. I was like, dang, <laughs> well, that means I'm 20, I'm 44. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, telling her age, and she'd probably kill me if she knew. But um, with that, that I just was so uh, that I think that is the first time I've heard her say that since our oldest was two, and our oldest is now twenty four, and she still know she knows we're in religion. So for her to say, um, "I'm proud of the family that you all created," I, I, that meant a lot, and um, I'm glad she did say that. So we'll wrap that part. Up, but there's Indeed. another question um, that geared that, that's really transitioning to more so about polygyny. And the question was, do we have each other's back? Um, I'll start off by saying that when people ask me, do you guys have each other's back? They're really looking to see if, for example, somebody asked me about polygyny in general or our husband in general. Um, they're kind of looking for me. Some of them are looking for me to complain about him. Oh, he's messing up. He's not doing a good job. And the first thing that I say is, I can't lie to you. I can't complain about him because I can't complain about him practicing polygyny because he's consistent in what he does. But he's typically consistent. I hate talking about him like he's not. He's right here. But he's typically, in my opinion, consistent in all that he does. So if he has to pray five times a day, he does that. Um, if he has to make sure, I call it hunting and gathering, um, <laughs> he does that. He gets the food, he gets the, the things that we all need, and he makes sure, he makes sure that we have those things. Um, and I know it's not easy, and I know it's difficult, but I do know some people um, are, are nosy, and some people just really genuinely are asking and want to know. 
Um, I don't want to come ever come from a place where I'm saying, you know, what he's messing up and he's doing this. We learned about edification years ago, and I like to speak good of him when he's around and when he's not around. I like to treat a room as though he's in it. So if I'm in a room full of women that are not so happy with their husbands and they go, well, Coach Fatima, what about George? <laughs> and I don't, I, I, I legitimately, and I mean that from my heart, I don't have complaints about him practicing polygyny in the way in which he practices it. So he doesn't play with time. He doesn't walk around and tell me how amazing Coach Nyla is and how horrible I am <laughs> um, and you should be like her. You know, I like to joke a lot, but there are some really sad cases of comparison. And we don't do that with among each other, period. So we're all three different people. So I like to respect that. But if somebody asks me, do I have his back? I have his back. I have Coach Nyla's back. And some people have fortunately, um, for me, and maybe unfortunately for them, experienced me in a different way because they've come to me and tried to say something negative about my co-wife. And um, I'm just here to kind of say that if they do that, they'll come on the losing end of that conversation. If it's about our husband, is it, if it's about Coach Nyla, I feel that especially as somebody that is now older and experienced more growth and really tried to be a, the best representation of Fatima that I can be, I can't do that if I'm sitting in a room going, well, she is trash and so is he too. You know, I, it just, it's counterproductive to me because I, I had to ex figure out my children are going to get older and the children of these people are going to get older and they're going to talk and they might say something to my child, um, our children, because all the kids in our family, whether they're my children or my bonus children, I have everybody's back. So, and I think they have mine. I don't have a question in my mind about that at all. Indeed, indeed. So do we have each other's backs? I mean, it, it should really go without saying. I'm I'm very strong on loyalty and, and things being together as a family. <clears throat> That's one of the goals um, I set from the beginning, uh, just for myself as an individual. And of course, I spread to my family. So you have to understand <coughs> when dealing um, with people that I've been knowing this woman since she's 15 years old. Okay, so I haven't let anyone um, under my watch harm her, talk crazy about her, anything like that without following it up myself in my power um, <laughs> from that time. So that's yeah. very important to understand. But also at the same time, even when you jump and talk to religion, that's not a small jump. So um, we have to understand men who are practicing religion have to understand that if you're married to somebody, this is the original wife or the first wife or whatever you like to um, label it, if you will, just for you know purposes to understand what order yes, um, someone was married. I have to understand that emotionally, if you're married, and I was married 15 years and then chose to practice polygyny, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be emotionally there and available to understand that this person now feels like the world might be crumbling down, yes. somebody's encroaching on the territory, um, feeling a loss of love. You know, there's a number of different things that will go through her mind and are real for her, even if it's not in reality. Okay. Right. So that must be understood. There's a shift. There's kind of a, a quake um, that can occur. And it usually does occur. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying it happened early on and stuff like that. Yeah, with religion, like she, she mentioned, you know, it's a, it's a period of growth. So yeah. that must be understood. Then of course, after the fact, meaning now, okay, now I have two wives and then I have to have the backs. All right, it's so my responsibility to protect and maintain her. I got to still protect them, their honor, their dignity, their reputation. I'm not talking crazy about her to Coach Nyla. I'm not talking crazy about anybody, nor am I talking crazy to coach, about Coach Nyla to Coach Fashman. It's not going to work. These are my wives. I'm there to protect. So having each other's backs, we go way back to being 15 years old. Okay? I have children older than that now. <laughs> you know, we got kids that's older than that that are grown. Right? So, again, it's important I only understand that, but don't come for it. We know... Um, we know shaitans, we know the devil's yeah. biggest, lovely, lofty goal is to really break up um, happy families. We know that game. We see it. We can smell it and we can sniff it. We hear and yeah. can see the bitterness in many people's faces. It is what it is. That doesn't affect us. It's really a you problem when it right. comes down to it. 
but don't come for me and my family. Don't don't. That's not yeah. wise to do for somebody who has decades in it and went from being a savage to being somebody in Islam. That now, if we're doing something, we're doing it for the right reason mm. versus for the wrong reasons. If that makes sense with you, so no doubt. I mean, it's my wife. I love her and loving her more than half my life. <laughs> okay, so and you know, it's again, it's extremely important. Um, to really understand these concepts and ideas, but at the same time have some flexibility, especially, again, if you're yeah. practicing um, polygyny, because you have to be aware of the different emotional challenges and struggles and the, the trust building and all the other kind of stuff. And I could have done things better um, at the beginning, but I hadn't really didn't have any experience and stuff like that, or really support other people no with support. superiors and support, you know, so yes. I could have done stuff better. She could have done things better. Yes, we're absolutely. human, you know, we're still growing and stuff right now. So you know, with that being said, of course, I got a bag. There's no question on that. And if you know people that know us are within our circle, then you would know the same thing. So yeah. much so that I don't get approached with any drama. No. But no brothers will come to <laughs> you with that or sisters. It's usually the women. Anyway. It's usually the you women know. I find. And 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 I want to make this disclaimer because I know there's some people that love us and uh, follow our channel and are following our social social media that are friends of mine or acquaintances of ours or people that just know us in the community. And they knew that at the beginning, it wasn't always like roses and um, what is coach now would say peaches and cream, <laughs> but um, it wasn't always that way, but they never saw us get into it or call each other names or put our hands on each other. And um, I remember my grandmother gave me really good advice. She said, don't, she would now, she wasn't happy about this. We both know that. I don't think any of our family that wasn't Muslim under really understood it, and that was okay because we were there to kind of clear things up for them, and that's all right. Sometimes you have to do that, but she told me, don't treat her badly, and then you got to go apologize and be this person that did something wrong. And she said, if you're not going to say nothing nice, keep your mouth shut, you know, and I think that's universal. So I learned very quickly, I don't need to say anything mean and cruel that I can't take back and then intentionally make the intention to hurt somebody that really didn't do anything to me. I know people think that she did something to me and she didn't. And I can say that on video, I can say that live, I can say that in a room full of people. I never thought I would be able to say that, being the 20 year old me that I always make fun of, but um, I learned early that I shouldn't challenge my destiny. Now I know that as a woman that is over 40 and spoke um, in, in, out of ignorance at 20 saying what I wasn't going to deal with in my life and then everything I said I wasn't going to deal with, I've dealt with all of it <laughs> and some. But it, I, I, I want to use those challenges that we've had as teachable moments and lessons moving forward to help other people. So this work and being this vulnerable is something not just for our family, but it is something to just reach the masses of people that are trying to, you know, be peaceful in polygyny, practice polygyny without going through all these bumps, you know, that they can avoid if we just have a dialogue, right. if we just talk to people about it. So this work is, um, I've always said, a labor of love, but it is something that, it has you completely vulnerable to people's judgment, and we can take the hits. We've taken harder hits than this, so yeah, for real. I don't really yeah. care about it. <laughs> Bring so, it I on. Mean, look, when, when you change your entire religion that your family has been on for far too long to accept the truth, and you hear all this stuff that they're on, and they haven't studied anything else. When you do that, when you change your whole diet program up, when you when you take your family in a different direction, caring about what others' opinions are of us and what they think about it when we're happy with it, when we're doing what's right and we feel that this is best for our family, yeah. then I don't really care. So it doesn't affect me that much. Um, nevertheless, definitely appreciate you. And it is a labor of love. We were tired yeah, of seeing the divorces and the challenges and the struggles. Yeah. So if you're able to benefit from just some of the jewels we get, we appreciate that. Make sure you we leave do. a comment, concern, share. Make sure you subscribe to like outstandingpersonalrelationships.com. Yeah. Um, and pe many people have been asking us about our Relationship Mastery course and you can find out more details about it if you go to outstandingpersonalrelationships.com slash RM for Relationship Mastery. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and sign out. We appreciate you. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.